Thanks for tuning in to our bonus episode preview. This is just a short sample of this week's exclusive Patreon episode. You can hear the episode in its entirety by becoming a member at patreon.com slash indoctrination, where you'll gain access to all of our exclusive episodes and merchandise. I am so happy to have one of my favorite people on the show today, Yanya Lalit, who I've known for such a long time. And we have been in each other's lives talking about a whole variety of different things, professional and otherwise, just getting to know each other throughout the years. And it's been really nice. It's been nice to feel that I've been supported by you in some ways. I've learned from you. I've commiserated. It's a nice relationship. So I really appreciate it. And it's nice to see you. Well, thanks, Rachel. I'm really happy to be here. It's really nice to talk to you because you have been so pivotal in so many people's lives and in so many people's understanding of what happens and why this happens. And so I'd love to talk to you about the books that you've written, the things that are happening now in our world, the political and social landscape. But most importantly, I think for people to know what resources are out there for them, I would love for you to start by talking about your new nonprofit, uh, which is very exciting. So tell us all about it. Well, people may know initially I had an LLC and uh, we were offering courses through that for survivors and for therapists and other kinds of things. And that didn't quite work out. And so while we were re assessing everything, I decided that I really needed to start a nonprofit, which I've thought about for years and I've just avoided because every time I'd look at the how-to book from Nolo Press, I'd go, no, this is too much. (laughs) Um, But now that I am the age that I am of 77, you know, I think about like, I'm probably the age Margaret Singer was when I met her and she was mentoring me. And you know, like you said, I have done so much work over the years and have such a huge catalog of writings and my books and all of that. And I decided that it was important for me to leave a legacy. So I'm at that age where you actually think about that possibility of of leaving everybody, which seems awful. I try not to think about it. <laughs> Um, so that that was the main purpose for the nonprofit. But secondarily, it was to be able to get tax deductible donations because we will continue with the courses and training therapists and all of the different things we've been doing and more. And we're hoping that we will get donations that can help provide scholarships for people, because, as you know, a lot of survivors don't have the money to take one of these courses or pay for a consultation or find a therapist or whatever. So I have a team that are all wonderful people. They're all survivors. Most of them took all the courses with us and that's how they met us. And and I work with Beth Matineer, who I believe you had on your podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's great. Who was a trauma therapist um, in the troubled teen industry uh, when she was a kid. And so there's, I think, about seven of us that are that we call the core team. And we have the nonprofit status. It's called the Lalich Center on Cults and Coercion. At the moment, um, yeah, at the, I'm really on about coercion because that's what people in this country need to understand, especially law enforcement and the legal world. And so I have a board, which has some fantastic people on it. Phil Elberg, the attorney, Shelley Rosen, the therapist in New York, uh, my best friend, Polly Thomas. Meg Applegate from uh, the CEO of Unsilence, because we're collaborating with her, with her work. So we have a great board. The board had its first meeting and approved the bylaws and several of the policies. And now we have the paperwork that we need to apply for the 501c3 uh, tax deductible status, which hopefully we'll have soon. We have a temporary website uh, that people can go to. It's lalichcenter.org. And all that's there is a link to sign up to be on our mailing list. So we're hoping people will go and do that. And then we need to find a web developer to build the full-blown website. And we're working primarily on infrastructure now. So we won't really be starting any of our programs until January uh, because we want it to be really solid. But it's really exciting. And everybody who's working with us is so excited. And um, we had a retreat in September, which was fantastic. 
at Aaron Robbins' house. I don't know if you had Aaron. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So Aaron Robbins is on our team. We met there with a professional facilitator and we're moving forward. And I just feel really great about it. And the fact that we'll be able to offer so many resources to people and hopefully be more accessible with the donations that we get. So what will people be able to get from the organization? Why would they direct themselves to this? For what services or for what kind of info? Well, we'll be doing the courses, um, like the Foundations of Recovery and Healthy Relationships and, and the ones that we did before. We have, I think, five or six courses that are online Zoom courses. And, and in those courses, we had people literally from all over the world, like Sweden, Slovenia, Spain, whatever. Uh, so we'll do the courses. We're going to make them a little longer than they were before because people want more and they want more type for like more time for like Q&A and discussion. So we'll have the courses. We'll have discussion groups. Um, we already have a discussion group just for people who were born or raised in a cult or a narcissistic family, whatever. We have a regular discussion group just for survive, any type of survivor. We want to start a family discussion group for family and friends of, who have someone in a cult. And it, you know, they, they never know where to go. I'm sure you're aware of that. And it's nice for them to be able to talk with other families and share ideas and stuff. We'll have the uh, CE, the continuing ed course for therapists and social workers. Um, we'll have a supervisory course for young therapists and social workers who need hours to be supervised. And uh, Beth is licensed to do that. We'll have a, a, a therapist discussion group where they can just, you know, get help um, how to handle this client or that client or something that came up. Um, we're hoping to have a prison project, which I'm really excited about. I have a former client who um, I tried to help her get life with parole instead of life without parole. And she was in a small cult in Colorado, and the leader banished her child, this woman's children to a car. They were like six and four years old, and they were in the car for a month in the month of July, and no one could bring them food or water. And when the thing got raided, it's a long story, but anyway, when the cult got raided, um, everyone got arrested, and this woman was charged with murdering her two children. The cult leader was also charged, but the cult leader actually got a lighter sentence than Sheikah. So I was hired by the defendant attorney and to see if we could explain what happened and why she wouldn't have gone to open the door of the car, you know, on she was under such coercion. And um, anyway, the jury didn't buy it. And she got life with parole. And before we left the courtroom, you know, I hugged her and I said to the attorney, make sure she gets my book, Take Back Your Life. Well, about six months later, out of the blue, I got a letter from her that just broke my heart. I was, I'm, I was just in tears. And she sent a beautiful picture of her. And she said that my book has been so helpful to her. Like she understands now what happened to her. She wants to do whatever she can to help people who've experienced things like she did. And she's been talking to other women in the prison who were in cults or abusive relationships. And they want, they're going to do a proposal to the warden that we can do our courses for the women in the prison who have that kind of background. So I have no idea if the warden will accept it, but it's so exciting. Mm -hmm.